Yeah. And, um, but it's seven o'clock now, so it should be starting soon. Yeah,
the first thing that is a match, because I'm sure we'll hear from you if you wish to have, but that's correct, the yeah. there's no vote to be taken unless you wish to move in the standing order that you did. Okay, so starting the proceedings then, we'll ask the Legal of Council to make the first effort, okay? Mr. Deputy Mayor, Deputy Mayor, just before we do that, um, can I ask, I know um, I've seen, as I'm sure other colleagues have seen, um, some of the uh, advice that we've been seeing in the debate <coughs> about trying to get as much of the uh, AK report as unredacted as possible. I understand the comments that have been made <coughs> and the point that's been made that in some cases people have promised anonymity in order to let them come forward and make their concerns known. So I've just done it in a positive way, if you like, uh, rather than a negative way. All that notwithstanding, and I understand something has, we have now received, we as members have received the, <coughs> uh, a partial thing anyway, and work will still go on as I understand it to extend that still further. But could I move that we remove the exemption? on the uh, partial keys that have been produced. Because again, I, I, I see this looks to be as the as heads of service, or acting heads of service, uh, people who were employed by the council. And also, of course, some of the <coughs> service providers that are listed. And I think, as you know, uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I've written to the borough solicitor about some particular concerns that have been raised about me. And I think I would want to know, I would certainly want to know if I had to ask any questions, if I was possibly going for a payment form who might be listed in some of these service providers. I think we've got an important public interest to make sure that the public are aware of some of the people, some of the people, some of the things listed in this, uh, this particular uh, exemption. So can I, can I move that we lift the exemption? On the appendix, please. Well, I'm going to ask the Director of Law to give us a little bit on that, please. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, the appendix contains a, a, a number of tables. The first, Table 1, merely lists uh, Chief Officers and Deputy Chief Officers of the Council, past and present. I think it is um, not unreasonable at, at that level in um, public employment that your names are in the public domain. Um, therefore, um, if members are minded that on balance the public interest is better served by the names of council officers being put into the public domain, I think there will be a reasonable grounds for taking that, that approach. In relation to table two, that names um, individuals and organisations. And I can um, understand the sense of um, public interest in, in terms of the safety of vulnerable adults in our borough. However, if you are minded to lift the exemption in relation to table two, um, I think I need to emphasize that if there are any errors contained in uh, the Anagnasty report in relation to those individuals, and actually the same principle applies to officers, although officers are perhaps less prone to resort to mitigation, if there are any errors contained within the report in relation to the service providers, um, and you'll see from the names that, um, that they may indeed be known to you in terms of other litigation. If there are any errors in the report, then it is likely that the council will face an action and claim for damages, um, and that might be substantial if, as a result of publishing the names, uh, businesses is lost with uh, errors in the report. Um, the council will have no claim back against uh, Mr. Monowski in view of the indemnities that have been granted to her as part of the terms of engagement. She undertook her investigation. So, this authority will be liable for any consequential claims arising from any errors in the report. Um, lastly, table three uh, is entirely blank, um, and I'm aware that members have asked for details of um, people who did not cooperate with the report. Um, I have asked um, BLA Piper uh, to provide you with a full list of names with the intention that if individual members believe that there's a matter of need to know, um, they need on, the, on an exempt confidential basis to receive additional names within the report in order to, for you to understand it in content more fully. Um, then that would be the subject of individual um, requests. So on balance, I can well understand the sense of public interest around disclosing the officer names on table one, but there is a heightened level of risk in relation to possible legal claim against the council in the event that you also elect to put table two into the public domain. Councillor Green, do you want to add to that? 
Only to say uh, that I, I believe that the public interest, given the issues that have been brought about and have arisen within the report, would be properly served uh, if we uh, remove the exemption on Table 1, Table 2, and as you say, Table 3 is blank. Uh, but certainly Table 1 and Table 2, and that starts the process of opening this up and showing that we are taking it seriously. As you well know, Mr. Deputy Mayor, you know, sunlight is the best for some of these matters. So I think it would be best for us to open. I'm more than happy for us to take this in, you know, in order, those on table one, those on table two. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I, I just say that as this has unfolded, uh, if you would care to check the minutes of each cabinet committee and then try and have a chance to discuss that either exactly the same questions and similar line of inquiry to ensure that as much uh, of this information is in the public domain as possible. So uh, we would have um, little or no problem in allowing that. Um, just, just in this world of litigation, um, given your clear advice, would it be elected members who are directly involved in this decision at any cost or would it be uh, the council as a, as a body?